Well, good morning, folks. Today, it's the next day. Devin Mustard actually took off with the load of bales up to Rock Valley this morning. Had a little change in plan. Hopefully, I don't know if you can tell, it's very gloomy and foggy. It's about eight o'clock. <sighs> it just doesn't look very promising for bailing right now. Hopefully the sun comes out and I can get some bailing done today. Since it's a little gloomy out and obviously still morning, so there's still a little dew on the ground, we're actually gonna haul some loads up to a local hay auction. They're having their first auction of the year. It's not too far away. It's about 20, 20 25 minutes away. It gives us kind of a benchmark to compare versus uh, Rock Valley. So we can uh, crunch the numbers and see what it is worth more doing, whether taking a load up to Rock Valley or taking them to the local auction. Number one, what do you get for the bales? What's the price per bale? Break it down. And then you gotta look at, okay, transportation costs. It's obviously a big cost. Going to Rock Valley, we're obviously using quite a bit more fuel and it's also taking quite a bit more time. Although we're hauling more bales, it's a full day to get, for us, 28 bales up there versus this local auction. We can get about four loads, 32 bales, hopefully in, oh, four to five hours. You crunch the numbers, see what it all comes out to, see what it's worth. At the end of the day, you make the decision, like it's worth it to go to Rock Valley or it's worth it to go to the local auction. So we're gonna find out the auctions this Saturday. So we'll haul some bales up there. For any of you that might be curious as to uh, Rock Valley, maybe you want to take some hay there. I will say it's it's a very strong hay market up there. There are guys that come from Canada, western parts of the United States, the Dakotas, Minnesota, everywhere. It's a huge auction. They have it every single week of the year, and they actually have it twice a week during the winter. Yeah, it's... It's pretty pretty crazy so if you actually you can go to their website rockvalleyhay.com and you can look up week to week auction prices it gives you uh, the whole list of every lot that was sold and the price it was sold at gives you a rough idea of what stuff's going for and it's it's pretty consistent it's it's a good market badger and dixie Two bestest friends in the world. Brings her to work every day. I hear she sometimes is a little late. She takes a little while getting ready in the morning. But the managers are here, ready to manage. Look at that roof. Solid. Oh, yeah. Back here, Rock Valley, hauling some hay today. Just got done taking some straps off. Got a couple trucks ahead of me waiting on to get unloaded. Just kinda waiting by to get this puppy unloaded and get on the road. Definitely a lot of hay here today. Can't see it all from where I'm sitting now, but the lot's definitely fuller than it was the last time we were here. Always a lot of hay to sell. But on Load G, they got these nice hay loader setups. Got a loader on it that can grab two bales at a time. Sometimes they'll grab three if it's stacked up right for them to grab it. But yeah, pretty slick. They can unload you pretty quick. And those things just handle the bales like they're little feathers. Just like that, we are unloaded. There's our stack of bales right there. Amongst the sea of bales that is out here, you got trailers that are already loaded. Rows and rows of bales out here. This is the outermost row. This is kind of the middle row. And on the other side of this, there's even more rows of bales. And the auction's not till Thursday, so there's still another day left of getting all staged up out here. This is every week. We do this every week. Not a lot to it. Pretty simple process. Time to head back home. Do it again. Fingers crossed. Hopefully it does well.
that I got a little bit of the diag on this fun project night number two. This is for one of the uh, sensors underneath the seat had been throwing a code for it, so I looked it up and it's for the accelerometer, which I got one here, which aids in the seat going up and down. So I started, to, I found the sensor. It's located right up in here. There it is. So I chased, I followed the wires back in the harness and there was a break in it. So I took the wire uh, tile off the loom and I'm just soldering up right here right now. So I'll put some, some heat shrink on there to keep protected and then I'll probably tape it up also. So I think that'll make our code go away. It's just flashing the electric light and the operator's manual, just kind of annoying. So we'll get this all buttoned up and cleaned up here. Check this uh, little tool out I got here. It's a AST is the brand. It holds, holds your wires, one on each side there. And then you can just put your soldering iron right underneath there. It's still hot right now, but you hold it right there. And then you take your solder once it's warm and then just tap it on that, that iron there and let that solder soak in between all them wires there and weave them together. That's a little bit better than a butt connector. I'll put the heat shrink on them now and and we'll uh we'll see if she's still throwing the code i make sure i got my colors right white white orange orange brown brown i got her hooked in we got one tie there and then this is where it got pinched earlier when the seat goes down it pinches on that rail in the back there i might maybe make this shorter make it a little uh get a little more slack or maybe we'll do this kind of a double deal there let it go up and down once and see i'll get a zip tie on there no more codes so good deal that sensor what it does on these 20 series seats, probably the tens and hundreds and maybe even the thirties, when you push that button and there's weight in it, and I go push it, as soon as that weight comes up to a high enough spot, it shuts it off. Or, which I don't know how you adjust that threshold. I always like them sitting down low, but that's when it pinched that when it was clear down low, it pinched on that rail back there. So I got it kind of tied back up here out of the way. So hopefully don't get caught in that scissor again. I think we're sitting a lot better than we were. If you push the button and it doesn't go out for your weight, you either have a bad accelerometer sensor or maybe you got a broken wire. So now I'm gonna go return this part because I think it was like a couple hundred bucks. So Caleb, sorry, but I'm gonna give you returns. So hopefully you take returns on Fridays. Out with the old, in with the new. Bought this 8640, 2003 in March. She's going to Watertown, South Dakota today. Had it for 19 years, almost 20. It was the big dog in 2003 to all the way to 2012. Then it became a big utility tractor. Bought a blade for it from a relative, from a relative. Uh, didn't put it on here right away and then after we started tiling we're like hey that'd be pretty handy fill in back trenches and back hole backhoe holes and anyway we just we got other tractors apparently we don't really use it anymore uh, it, it's funny it's last couple things it's did oh had a landlord buy an acreage a few years back actually quite a few years so I would store it at his place in the winter and he would use the three point to hay his horses and then he'd use the blade to push snow out. Did that for like three or four years. That really worked good. She's headed to a cattle um, feeding lot or a dairy farm and gonna pack silage and that's gonna be her home hopefully for the next 20 years. Kinsey Repower, best thing they ever did to these old babies. Nice knowing you. AKA Super Hog has left the building. Give it a hug, goodbye. <laughs> I miss you, girl. It's been real. Take it's, care of her new owner. It's been fun, but it hasn't been real fun. It has been. <laughs> See, that's the thing. These younger kids didn't grow up with this generation, so they don't understand nah, that's cool. the blood, sweat, and tears that these tractors put in. When we put this thing on a 15 knife anhydrous bar in 19, or excuse me, not 19, in 2003 in the spring, it was like, oh my gosh. It's like the floodgates have been opened and you could go 
to town. What a super hog. That's how it acquired its name. You know, sometimes you just got to move on. So here we are. Hasta la vista, baby. Well, another day, another dollar. Got the quad track. Got the ripper over here. Just got done hooking it up. Got my menagerie of hydraulic hoses all hooked up. Let me show you a little unique thing that we like to do around here. So it never fails. Every time you go up to hook an implement, you always forget where every hose goes. Now the nice thing on this tractor is that they have all your SCVs labeled so that you know where each hose goes. This does your lift. This, there's like three different sections on here that lift up and down. One of them does your fold. And they also give you these flow directions, but just because on this left side, this one's pointing in, and that one's pointing out on the right side, they're different on this one based on how we want it to be set up. So what we like to do, you take a yellow zip tie, which means on that hose, it goes on the left. So on all the hoses that go to the left, I put a yellow zip tie. And on the right one, I put a red, because red is right, it starts with the letter R, just makes more sense. So on every hose that goes on the right side, is labeled with a red zip tie. So that way, when anyone comes to hook it up, they you know, oh, first step is green, blue, brown, black, purple, and that's easy. And then they know yellow on the left, red on the right. Now there's some implements and some older tractors that don't have this coloring labeling system. So then what we do is we take a different color zip tie. Usually we do black for the bottom, because the dirt is black and that's the very bottom. Then usually do green for the next, then maybe do a yellow, and then blue, and whatever. Because you go dirt soil, green crop, yellow grain, blue sky. And if you add a fifth one, then you gotta get creative. And we've been struggling, trying to get this hay bale. Got some wet, dewy mornings, fog yesterday really set us back. We are able to get a little bit of grass done yesterday, so that was good. I'm gonna go turn over the alfalfa again, let the underside get some more sun. Much has been a pain in the butt. Come September, making hay can get kind of annoying. You gotta do what you gotta do, but we're just too close to crunch time. You just didn't really wanna wait any longer to cut it been a dry year so stuff really hasn't been growing that great second cut grass has been bleh. but uh just gonna get what we can get come on well here we are replacing we are. some whatever you call these louvers, louvers on the chaffer because we're hammers yeah reason, we pound somebody commented last year when we were in harvest and, and you need... were back there doing something with the yeah. chaffer and they're like, you boys are hard on jabbers. Yeah, we are hammers for some reason. I don't know why. Jeez, these high yielding beans. These high yielding, yielding crops. Yeah. High yielding rocks. High, high yielding rocks. rocks and uh, finger pickups on the bean head. Yeah. Rocks, you chew the fingers. And Actually, definitely not. Pull that out. It's just like a little grenade going through here. There you go. They're not that bad, are they? It'll buff. So Derek, yeah. what are these? So those are flat louvered ones. There's some theory on, they had them in there, but there's some theory on why they're for high moisture. I don't know. I don't really That's know why. The deer way. That's what John Deere says. So. John Deere says it, so you do it. Knows in the comments, because I don't, I don't know. That's I, what we got. That's what it's got. <laughs> Here's to the good days, here's to the sorrows If this is a mistake, I know about tomorrow I don't wanna fight no more, cause I don't feel the need no more, no Just wanna make it stop
say we didn't I was your first love And you were my first one Chase all the memories of venom in the rain